The second uh, cause for a possible uh, hyperventilation is laryngeal spasm. And this is relatively common after general anesthesia, especially in children undergoing oropharyngeal surgery. It might be partial or complete, and it might be caused by direct stimulation of the cord by secretions or blood, or of the epiglottis by an oropharyngeal airway or laryngeal mask. How do we manage it? First of all, we need to remove any foreign material, such as blood or secretions. Given oxygen at 100% rate, start positive pressure ventilation by mask to maintain oxygenation until the spasm subside. We might utilize small doses of succinylcholine if attempt to oxygenate the lung fails. We need to maintain ventilation. And if all these measures failed, a tracheal intubation may be advisable. What about diminished respiratory drive? As we mentioned before, the commonest cause for this is drug, drug that we utilize. Uh, all inhalation and anesthetic except nitrous oxide might lead to this. All IV anesthetic agent can lead to this except ketamine and all opioid, especially in an elderly population. Also, a common cause for a diminished, diminished respiratory drive apart from medication is hypothermia, and this is mainly seen in children. So how to manage it? With mild hypoventilation, usually this can resolve spontaneously. We need to maintain adequate oxygenation to prevent any hypoxemia uh, or hypoxia. And if there is no severe increase in partial arterial pressure of carbon dioxide or no delayed recovery, we can monitor it till it resolves. Uh, it's very important to mention that an increasing uh, in FiO2 in hypoventilation will not work unless the cause is corrected promptly. If the ventilator drive is reduced, uh, reduced excessively, resulting in any of the following, such as hypoxemia, or hypoxia, severe increase in PaCO2, or delayed recovery or imp uh, impaired consciousness, the following management can be taken. Naloxone can be given at a rate of 1.5 to 3 microgram per kilogram IV and can be repeated every two to three minutes until improvement occur. In order to prevent this from happening, uh, it can be repeated at 50% of the effective IV dose and may be administered intramuscularly or in an IV infusion fashion. Residual neuromuscular blockade, also a common cause for hyperventilation, and this is actually the commonest non-central factor associated with hyperventilation. It may be exaggerated by neuromuscular junction disease, such as myasthenia gravis or electrolyte disturbances. And usually it is associated with uncoordinated or jerky movement. It's very important to assess the ad adequacy of antagonism of neuromuscular block, and this can be assessed by the grip strength, adequate cuff, ability to, st to sustain head lift for at least five seconds, ability to produce viral capacity of at least 10 mil per kilograms or by nerve stimulation, which is the most sensitive technique. How do we manage it? Additional doses of new stegmine, up to total of 5 milligrams, or in case of the usage of rocoronium or vancronium, we might use sagamadex at 2 milligram per kilogram. If the block persists and there is no improvement of the muscle power, it's best to resort to tracheal intubation and artificial ventilation to make sure that we evaluate the cause and provide anesthesia to, prevent, to prevent any awareness.